Welcome to another edition of KLHS TV News. I'm Jackie Harding. And I'm Hannah Sanders. We're broadcasting from the CW Sessman Studio in Liberty, Missouri. Coming up, Olivia Book has an in-depth forecast for you detailing whether the stormy skies will make way for sunnier weather in the coming days. And the skies were solemn during Bill Clinton's speech at the 20th anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing. He was president when tragedy struck in the Midwestern town. Now his wife is in the running for 2016. What he has to say about Hillary's presidential bid after the break. It's all coming up from your generation. This is KLHS. Welcome back. Olivia Book stands by with an in-depth forecast previewing this week's weather. I'm crossing my fingers for it to be sunnier and warmer than last week. Olivia? What's up guys? I am outside on the track and field of Liberty High School where they will be hosting their first ever strut and stroll this Friday. Where it should be a lot warmer than it is today because it is very windy outside. Hence my jacket, hopefully you all have one too, because today's high is a 59 and low 42, but tomorrow should be warming up with a high of 69 and also a low 42. That's all I have, back to you guys. Thanks Olivia, well as I mentioned this past week was cloudy and rainy, but in the news it was highlighted by presidential bids, an earthquake in Taiwan, and the 20th anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing. Hannah Sanders stands by with an Around the World in 60 Seconds. Thanks, Jackie. That's right. This past week, we remembered the tragedy which struck Oklahoma City 20 years ago. Bill Clinton, who was the president during the bombing, made the trip to OKC to deliver a speech reflecting on disaster. And while the theme of the day wasn't the most positive, he did mention his wife's recently announced presidential bid. He said he's proud of Hillary, who now joins the likes of Lincoln Chafe of the Democrats and Ted Cruz, Mark Everson, and Marco Rubio of the Republicans as declared presidential candidates in 2016. On the other side of the world, a 6.6 magnitude earthquake off the coast of Taiwan struck early on Monday. The U.S. Geological Survey, or USGS, reported that it was located approximately 47 miles off the coast. The Central News Agency of Taiwan said that the quake's impact was felt all over the island, including Taipei, the capital. No serious damages or injuries have been reported, but we will keep you updated on the story and others around the world. Back to you, Jackie. Thanks, Hannah. The LHS Jazz Ensemble performed at the 18th Fine Jazz Festival in the historic Gym Theater on Friday. Their performance earned them three straight superior ratings. It was also capped off by four of our students earning outstanding soloist awards. Travis Skyer, alto sax, Zach Garland Foster, tenor sax, Lindsay Daniels, trumpet, and Lindsay Bogue, vocalist. Students, go to your email to vote for the next Exit 16 show's time period theme for the 1950s, 1970s, 1980s, or future. It is on April 30th at 7 in the Little Theater, and tickets are $3 at lunch or $5 at the door. School news doesn't stop there. It extends to the pitcher's mound, the soccer field, and track. Morgan Fleming stands by with the latest in Blue Jay athletics. Over the weekend, the baseball team defeated Oak Park 13-5. Carlos Valencia picked up the win. The Jays are back in action today in a huge home game against the Staley Falcons starting at 4 o'clock. Staley is ranked number one in the state as they are undefeated. The Jays are looking to give them their first loss of the season. Sports Marketing will be hosting a $3 tailgate during the game with meals including hamburgers, hot dogs, chips, and a drink. Sheridan's will also be there available for purchase. The women's soccer team fell 6-3 on Friday night to Park Hill South. The Jays and the Panthers exchanged goals until the second half when Park Hill South pulled away. Grace George, Emily O'Hare, and Addie Gray all scored. The soccer team plays tonight at home beginning at 4 o'clock for Lee Summit North. 
The Royals played an intense series this weekend against the Oakland Af Athletics, which was supposed to be a fun homecoming for Royals longtime DH Billy Butler. But things went otherwise. Friday night, with the Royals down a run, Athletics third baseman Brett Laurie slid in hard to break up a potential double play, and in the process injured Royal shortstop Alcides Escobar. After watching the replay of the slide, most would say Laurie's slide was dirty and uncalled for. This would spark more drama on Saturday when Royals pitcher Jordano Ventura hit Laurie in the elbow with a fastball, which promptly emptied the benches and got Jordano thrown out of the game immediately. Sparks flew again on Sunday when Athletics pitcher Scott Kazmier hit Lorenzo Cain in the first inning, which infuriated Royals pitching coach and manager Ned Yost, eventually getting them ejected. And again in the eighth when fireball Kelvin, Kelvin Herrera threw a 98 miles per hour pitch behind Lowry. Herrera, along with Royals bench coach and Alcides Escobar, got ejected in the process. Despite all of the weekend's ejections and tempers slaring, the Royals won Friday night and Sunday, taking the series from the A's. They take on the Twins at home tonight, beginning at 7. That's all we have for you today. We'll be back for more scores and sports news on Thursday. Back to you, Jackie. This is a premiere of a segment we'd like to call The Word with MJ and AJ. Enjoy. This is the word from MJ and AJ. Spell top. Spell top. T O P. Now say top two times. Top top. Say it three times. Top top top. Four times fast. Top 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 top. What do you do at a green light? You stop. stop. <laughs> <laughs> Name one of Thomas Edison's inventions. Um, the wheel? <laughs> <laughs> the light bulb? Is that it? 13 puppies, all but eight die. How many are left? Eight. Four? Four. No, five. <laughs> 13 puppies, because puppies don't die. That's so sad. Oh, okay, okay. What weighs more, a ton of cotton or a ton of stone? Stone. <laughs> stone? A ton of stone. <laughs> they both weigh a ton. You're in a race and you pass the person in second place. What place are you in? First. 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 Second place. Your mom had four kids, north, east, and south. What's the fourth kid's name? West. 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 Hmm, I don't know. JP. Whatever she wanted it to be, but West. <laughs> 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 Women, women's rights. Hannah and I are now sitting with Noah Posel, who's here to talk to us about the upcoming theater production, Harvey. Hi, Noah. How are you doing today? Great. How are you doing? Just great. So what is the main plot in Harvey? Uh, Harvey is basically about a guy named Elwood P. Dowd who has this imaginary rabbit that he sees. And his sister Vita decides that she's going to take him in uh, to an insane asylum. Mm -hmm. So she takes him there and then she meets all these weird, interesting characters and hijinks ensue. So with this in-depth process, how is Harvey progressing? Uh, it's progressing pretty well. It's really tough because at the same time that we're rehearsing this, a lot of us in the show are also doing uh, the one act of our winner's show, Death of a Salesman, so we're taking that to state this week, but it's still going. It's just we're just at school a lot, you know? Yeah. How does the cast like differ from Harvey and the one act play you guys are doing? Uh, it differs because, uh, well, first off, it's um, it's a slightly larger play, I think, but also um, it, it's just kind of as the shows progress, there's uh, you you get to be the same type of people who are like you know working in the shows and who are you know have been doing it all year, so mm -hmm. it, it's kind of the same people, but I mean we're doing different roles and stuff like that, so it's interesting. And speaking of roles, what is your character? What do you do in the play? I play uh, Dr. Sanderson, who is the assistant doctor in charge of uh, the insane asylum. I'm a bit younger, and he's just a pretty normal guy, but yeah. yeah. 
Um, your favorite moment in the play, are you in that scene or? Uh, yeah, I think the, the thing that I think is the part of the play that I like the most is when I first come in and I'm talking to Elwood because uh, his sister, I thought that his sister was the crazy one, so I had taken her up to the you know crazy padded room. And then slowly, as we start talking with him, he starts acting a little bit weirder, and it comes to, you know, people start figuring out, like, oh, he's the crazy one. He should be in the padded room. So, you know, yeah, that's probably my favorite moment. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a great play. Thanks for coming in. Anytime. Harvey is on May 7th, 8th, and 9th at 7 p.m. in the Little Theater. It's $5 for students and $10 for adults. Make sure to go and see it. Emily Klink and Hannah Sanders had the opportunity to travel downtown and explore the Kauffman Center for Performing Arts. Here's the 411 on the 816. This is a bright and shining downtown gym of Kansas City. And this is the 411 on the 816. Two theater halls connected by a vast glass hallway, a tiered roof enclosing the architectural masterpiece. But the Kauffman Center for Performing Arts is so much more than an eye-catching structure. It's a unique building that has changed the skyline of Kansas City. While opera and orchestra are two of the main attractions, the Kauffman Center welcomes many diverse events. There's two performance halls here. Um, one holds about 1,800 people, which is your traditional opera house. And the hall that we're in right now is 1,600 people that um, the symphony performs here. This is Hellsberg Hall. It seats 1,600 people. And we had a special acoustician come in and work in this hall and in our other performance space. This is Muriel Kaufman Theater. Um, it seats 1,800 people and uh, is the performance home of the Lyric Opera of Kansas City and the Kansas City Ballet. The architect for the entire facility, his name is Moshe Softy. The carpet that we're standing on right now is red, and of course over on Hellsworth Hall it's blue and the rest of the building is white. And the reason he did that is he really wanted the people to be the color in the building. Every act, every performance that we bring here just has a different nuance to it. It was from 1995 to about 2011 with the whole process. This has been Isaac Knopf, Emily Klink, Hannah Sanders, and Jackie Harding reporting for the 411 on the 816. That's all we have for you today. We'll be back on Friday, but today for Hannah Sanders, Olivia Book, Morgan Fleming, and all of our production crew, I'm Jackie Harding. So long.